Hello friends, welcome to my Royal Family News Channel. Before moving on to the video, if you are not subscribed to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and turn on notifications, so let's move on to the video. St. Michael's Church of England High School in Rowley Regis, in Sandwell. He wrote the Prince of Wales last September, inviting him to visit to come and see the wonderful initiatives he and other students are doing. Other schoolboys are a group of people who come together for a meeting with one common interest, discussing ideas and projects for helping others, from helping others in terms of supporting mental health. As Freddie put it, it is, and it remains to be, suicide, the largest killer among young males, until people begin the conversation. Imagine, with so much that he gets involved with, this really piqued the interest of the Prince of Wales, who decided to come and visit the school and, of course, meet with Freddie. What an experience, for him, yes, but the whole school. Part of that visit was Prince William taking part in a radio segment for the school, where he was asked to tell a dad joke. Well, Jack Whitehall got hold of this information, and he decided to put the a video out onto social media talking of the fact that he is now a victim of outrageous shading. He said he's been rinsed by the future king and there goes his knighthood in mock outrage. I love Jack Whitehall, actually, he's very funny, and I would say not all of his dad jokes are dad jokes. He had roles in some funny TV series as a teacher too. Definitely worth a watch, but especially for me in my age group, because the way the actors portray it was like getting in a time machine because that's exactly how most of the people used to behave whom I went to school with. After all, Freddie and his friends told the reporters that they laughed, but it just makes one wonder if it might not have been sympathetic laughter. When Prince William left, one of the teachers said, this was such an exciting experience for the children at this school because I'm always telling them to reach for the stars and aim big, you know, to write these letters, write to people, you never know what can happen. And then, of course, the school actually has Prince William come to it, so it really does give all those children just an amazing Philip because, literally, anything is possible. And after leaving the school, Prince William visited Woodgate Valley Urban Farm in Birmingham. He met with a few volunteers and helpers, of course, with a couple of the residents. Friendly and cute, there are plenty of animals to pet, from pigs, sheep, chickens, pygmy goats, and ducks to guinea pigs. In an adorable set of very sweet pictures, one guinea pig received both cuddles and even a grooming session from the Prince of Wales. One of the photos depicted Snowflake the guinea pig, who seemed to have just realized for the first time that she was being groomed by the future king. She looked quite surprised. Like I said, Snowflake, dream big, for you never know when your dreams could come true. I can imagine she walks through the school now with a little tiara on saying, do you know who I am? I mean, she wouldn't be the first person to let the fame of the royal family and the links to the royal family get to her head since there is a certain duchess in Montecito who tends to behave like this and likes to tell lots of people when she's got a magazine interview and that she's a princess and little girls think that she's a princess. And you knew this? I can't think of very many people who actually see her as a princess outside of herself. I think the term don't you know who I am is another one. Not to say Meghan has used that, but it is from her attitude that that would be something that wouldn't be too far-fetched for her to say, possibly. It turned out that nobody remembered Meghan the way she remembered. In an embarrassing story that's come out, Sophie Trudeau, the former wife of Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, spoke in an interview, and she was asked about Meghan, and she said, I know her, but we haven't spent much time together. This is quite the opposite of Meghan's gushing story on her Archetypes episode. And Meghan told the really sickening story about how they got together and it was, like, so sisters, and they drank wine as their kids swam in the pool together. Lily would have been about two or three, and Archie would have been about four or five, possibly a little bit younger. But the way Megan was selling it and about how Sophie sent her loads of little mantras throughout the pregnancy, you would have thought the two were tight, and they may well have been while Sophie was married to Justin. But now that she's divorced, I guess Sophie's lost her usefulness. You got to remember this. So, friendship with Jessica came about because Megan cozied up to Jessica who in turn introduced Megan into that particular set, 
the Canadian political it girls, as it were. Megan used Jessica, who used Sophie, and so on. This all worked in Megan's favor, of course. Spiderweb of reaching her goals. It's kind of ironic when I think that Harry would say that Camilla left a trail of bodies to get to the crown, and I think it's actually a lot more closer to home. Megan has left an awful lot of bodies in her wake as she trampled and clawed her way to the top. The problem is, however, one has to be nice to people on the way up, when they are ready and waiting for him on the way down. So maybe Sophie was choosing Jessica, or maybe Megan just chose in the divorce that she would keep Justin, who I am sure goes on to prove far more useful for her and for future schemes that she goes on to plot. Now, this is not good at all, not only for Sophie, who clearly does not have good and tight friendship with Megan because, well, let's just say that only 10 now out of 50 are out in the open. This can be because several people have sent them back. There is a rumor that Adele and Kevin Costner were, too. People will say, return to sender, but this is not confirmed, and I will take it, like they said. But, given the way Kevin was smirking as Megan tried to hog the limelight at his last award show, it would probably be he who'd say no thank you. Now, it seems every person that did their part of the transaction and that knew Megan advertised that they had Megan's jam and it was delicious on Instagram or social media. And we are two people who seem to have quickly forgotten about it. And that was Chrissy Teigen and John Legend, who were just being interviewed at a Netflix premiere. And well, I've just got a clip for you. Speaking of treats, I have to ask, how was? Now, the Flamingo Estate reference, this is really important because at the time that Megan decides, okay, I'm going to be launching Arrow, there were a lot of comparisons that came out saying she was completely trying to steal the concept off an estate that already exists. Now there are posh shops all around that area, and who can resist a flamingo? This was just an idea based on him by Megan. We do know she doesn't come up with ideas herself. She's the queen of plagiarism. But the reason why so many accusations were particularly loud to do with the Flamingo estate is that Megan tried to bulldoze her way into business with Christensen and his boyfriend Aaron Harvey for money. There were, you know, a few videos released in 2022 of the basement where Megan and Harry do their Zoom calls with the tastefully placed Flamingo estate books. We do know Megan places everything so tastefully, and it can sometimes come across as maybe buttering someone up, saying, oh, look, we have the books in the background. Technically, you've got an edge on everybody because we can give you that kind of royal seal of approval. Rest assured, Flamingo Estate doesn't need an ex-royal stamp of approval, it is very well established and very well liked among the A-listers as they have put in years of hard graft. Rachel Strarin, from the entertainment website Puck, said Megan had had a number of meetings with both. She was willing to come on board as an active partner, and so relevant information to do with the finances and running of the business was given to Megan. As what you would give to any new potential business partners or investors, but they reportedly decided they didn't want to take the business in the direction, presumably, Megan had pitched to them. As it's Megan, we know that it would have been an all-out takeover by her. So you can just imagine their surprise with what, 18 months later, Megan decided to launch her own, very similar concept, called American Riviera Orchard. Megan has applied for a trademark to sell items of near-identical nature, but this is just absolutely something that comes out of Megan's playbook, doesn't it? The same goes for the plagiarism situations we have seen time and time again, and then she has the gall to turn around and say to these people, I would love to come on board, I love your concept, I want to take it over, take everything and take credit for what you've built up for years. That's what she's doing with my candidate and saying the same thing. I'm the star. I've got the royal connection. I can really make this work. I've seen very similar, I'm sure, and I was going to develop my own, and she's done that, and it looks like she's cheek. She's sinned the business plans and got as much info from them as she could to say that she wants to come on board, and now she's creating her version of it, I suppose. But really, I don't think they should worry, because while I suppose she might sell stuff at some stage, perhaps, when it actually comes to be a reality, I guess she'd have the same eye-watering, shall we say, price tags.
The difference is Arrow is not established, while Flamingo Estate is. And not only does it have Hollywood actors associated with it, but they do supply their products through it. They also highly rate the quality of the things they sell. In my opinion, Megan and Arrow is about as much of a threat to Flamingo Estate as the Holiday Inn is to the Hyatt. Seriously, all jokes aside, this is exactly what went wrong with the royal family. She had hoped that as soon as she entered into a marital contract with the royal family, she would be regarded as an equal of Catherine's. Catherine has worked her socks off for so many years. She has kept her head down and taken all the abuse that was thrown at her. She has ridden out the media storms. She worked her way up, she got the respect within the family, within that very well-oiled cog and how the monarchy works. How is that to be treated exactly the same? And life just does not work that way, and this is no different. She does not want to step on other people's work or have the same amount of recognition for it when she had done not a bit of work to get it. Everything has been handed to Meghan and Harry on a silver platter throughout their lives, and when it actually comes down to developing something successful beyond the hype, it takes hard work. Something neither one seems willing to put in. Now, it's not just Flamingo Estate and the royal family. We've recently seen this with all having to do with Netflix. There's been lots of references to Martha Stewart with her Martha Knows Best brand. Then of course, there is Joanna and Chip Gaines with the Magnolia brand. The difference is with Megan and both of these women, they were both grinders from the bottom to the top. Chip and Joanna were well-established and well-loved before signing TV deals and launching products. This goes the same for Martha Stewart. Everybody knows who Martha Stewart is. Everybody knew who Martha Stewart was before she signed these big TV deals. But no really, these folks have been at it so long they've weathered every storm and they've earned the position they have through hard work. Megan would never have even half the kind of fame that she is carrying if she had not been introduced to Harry. Plain and simple. She was being written out of suits because Patrick J. Adams was leaving. They weren't going to leave Megan in there as it was. She was only in there because she was his girlfriend. She had never had a breakthrough in her career prior to that. She had reached that age but had well and truly tipped over to that other side of the hill. That's why Megan put in so many quick dashes to come and hang around celebrity hotspots. She was cozying up to Millie McIntosh and loads of others, Lizzie Cundy, anyone that she can get close to so that she can be on that circuit of celebrity to potentially meet some wealthy footballer or somebody to pay for her for the rest of her life. She has struck gold. Dream big with her vision board. She has bagged Prince Harry. Success and popularity do not come when you use all that money of your husband or by screaming at the top of your voice, expecting others to do that for you with all those staff that you hire. And, you know, now I'm going to finish up with my final story, but I've got a funny clip for you at the end of this video, so bear with me. Harry emerged from a Montecito mansion, or, rather, the front door garden of the studio, should he have been allowed in that day. Harry has made an appearance alongside his medals to present an award for Soldier of the Year and to present and give U.S. Sergeant First Class Elizabeth Marks. Harry had reportedly met her back in 2016 at the Invictus Games, Orlando, and thus was the first among the organizers who felt he was the suitable guy to give her the award. But what caught most of the attention were his badges, sorry, medals. Harry has one medal for his 10 years of service, and this was given to him, as I quote, when I was there in Afghanistan. His other three medals are a gift for his service. They are for her golden jubilee, her diamond jubilee, and then her platinum jubilee. It was given to him not as a soldier, not as a serving soldier, not as a veteran. They gave those to him since he's in the British royal family, and she is his grandmother. Mike Tyndall himself got two of those medals, and as you will be aware, he has never served in the forces. Far more deserving on him, though. He has never betrayed the Queen, and what Harry and Meghan tried to do was pull down the legacy of the Queen, which I find very unforgivable. Harry was defying his military oaths to serve the King, Queen, country. He was letting down the Queen. He was letting down Prince Harry. 
Philip, letting down his father, and then, of course, the future king as well, his own brother. It means that Harry is going against all that the military stands for, not only in the UK but also in the US. Notably, Petty Harry was not wearing the king's coronation medal, which would have been fine since they were given to him as a family member. Harry, as I say, petty to the last. He wanted to make a point of the fact that he wasn't wearing father's coronation medal of Queen Camilla. By now, Harry's had so long to be childish, I'm surprised he hasn't stooped to wearing one of those yellow pins that say, not my king. Now, of course, we've had Harry's fan base, and then we've had the people who defend him and say, well, he's got every right to wear his medals. Yes, he does. He has every right, but I just wanted to make it clear, Harry hasn't earned those. He is not a war hero or something. Three of those were a gift to him from the grandmother. He made her life a living hell, and in every possible way, he did her harm in those final years. I really do question those people, organizers, who think that Harry, who acted the king, queen, and country role, should now be a good representative, handing out awards to his veterans and soldiers. Surely they can think of someone a little bit better. For Harry, he now has the Invictus Games to use as a fig leaf for still pretending that somehow he is still attached to the military and the royal family. He, in fact, is not. Okay, so in this next video, I'll be talking about Harry and Meghan's private visit and the private invite to Nigeria. This has actually not been an official tour or an unofficial tour, they are not working royals, though the media and probably their PR are trying to spin it. That's it for our video my friends, I hope you have liked it, please let me know your thoughts in the comments, and like the video. If you haven't done so yet if you want to be first to be informed about my content, please subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on notifications. Thank you for spending this time with me, take care of yourself and stay healthy, I'll see you in the next one.